There we go. Okay. So today we're doing lesson 1.8. We're only doing one lesson today. Uh, as a reminder, lesson 1.7 and 1.8 will be due on Friday. Um, and I, and you should have time in class afterwards, like I said, to be able to work on both of them. All right, so we are working with combining like terms and the distributive properties today. Um, there are no equations, there's just expressions. So you will be solving them or simplifying these expressions as far as they can go by combining like terms. So I saw this mistake a couple times on the quiz where we have five plus two plus X. And some of you put seven X, but you can't do that because seven and two are not like terms with X. In order for them to be like terms, the seven and a two would have had to have an X with it. So up here at the top of the notes, collecting like terms, it's showing you here that four A and two A are like terms. So you can combine those into six A. Remember when you're adding and subtracting with variables, you do not add exponents. The variables just stay as they are. And then five and three, because they do not have a variable, they are like terms. And so you would take five minus three and that gives you two. One other thing, when you're combining like terms, always take the sign in front of the number and that tells you how you're gonna combine them, whether you're gonna add or subtract. So let's go to this first set. These are These two are just like the first few problems in your homework. And it says to identify the terms that are like the bolded term. So we need to figure out which terms here are like this one so that we could combine them if we wanted to. In order for terms to be alike, they have to have the exact same variables and each of those variables have to have the exact same exponent. So let's look at this first one. Okay, um, we have 5xy squared. So we are looking with uh, at terms that have an uh, xy squared. So this one has an xy, but y is not squared, so it is not the same or is not like. This one is missing the y squared. This one has an xy squared. So this one right here is a like term to the bolded term. Y is missing the square unit and the x, so that's not a like term. This one has an X and a Y squared, so that is like our bolded term. So the answer to this one would be 12 X, Y squared and eight X, Y squared, okay? Any questions on that? Okay, I want you to go ahead and do example two on your own and positives and negatives don't make a difference in this situation. When you're done, you can check your answer up here. Okay, are there any questions on how to identify like terms? Okay, let's go ahead and move down to the bottom. Now we're going to actually take these terms and we are going to combine them. So um, I use boxing, circling, color coding. You do not have to do that. This is just an option for you. Um, but in looking at this expression right here, I can see that 3x and negative 4x are like terms. Remember, take the sign in front of the number. What that sign is telling me is that I'm going to subtract, take 3x and subtract my 4x. Okay. Now, going back to the lesson that we did last, I'm gonna change the subtraction to adding the opposite. So if I have negatives in there, then I change it to, if I have subtraction with negatives, I change it to adding. So I have three positives, four negatives, three minus four is a negative one, okay? Then my next one is 12y and 5y. Those are like terms. They both have the same variable. And in this case, I have a positive with both of those. So I'm just going to take 12 plus 5, and I get 17. 12y plus 5y. 
Now I can write out my final answer and write it in alphabetical order as best you can. This answer right here will be negative 1x plus 17y. And you do not need the negative 1 there. You can just have negative x. Okay. So any questions on that one? Because you're taking, oh, because it's a positive 17. Um, so I'd make a plus. So that's a good question. All right, I want you guys to try this one at the bottom. Example four, try that one on your own. It's a little bit longer, but I want you to go ahead and try it. And I'm going to pause the video while we work on this. Okay, so I'm going to circle my like terms. I have 4f squared. I have negative 3f squared. And I have a positive 1f squared. So what that is, is I have 1. No, I have 4 minus 3 plus 1. Again, I'm going to change this. Well, I don't need to change this one because it's the 4 is bigger than the 3. So 4 minus 1 is 1. And 1 plus 1 is 2. So I have a 2f squared here. Then my other ones are negative 15cf and a positive 17cf. So that's negative 15 plus 17, which gives me a positive 2cf. Okay. So now I'm going to rewrite my answer up here. I have 2f squared plus 2cf. So, yes. Yeah, so that was a good question. She, so you wrote it as 2cf plus 2f squared. Okay. So the thing in algebra, a lot of times, instead of an alphabetical order, if, if you have multiple variables, they'll put it in exponent order for greatest space. But I will take any answer. Either way you write it should be fine. Okay, let's go down to the bottom, or the next one. We have fractions. Um, this is why I put fractions in our last couple of uh, notes, because we have them in almost all of our homeworks. Do you have questions? So, for example, for the, I the yeah, that's okay. We just, yeah. all right. So, first, I'm going to identify my like terms. And these two right here are like terms. And then these two right here are like terms. So, when I add them, I could add them separately. Okay. So I'm going to take one third and two fourths. I'm going to find a common denominator and add them together. So what is my common denominator with one third and two fourths? Anyone know? 12. Yeah, so I'm going to multiply this one by four to get 12 and this one by three to get 12. And that gives me four twelfths x plus three twelfths x, which equals seven twelfths x. So that's my first, that's my first one. Seven, oops. Seven twelfths now I have to combine negative half y to one y. So I have negative one half y plus one y. Now, what's my common denominator here? Between two and one? Oh, it's two. And if you think about this, one is just one over one, or what's another way to write one as a fraction that has a denominator of two? Two over two. So I can have negative one half plus two over two. Okay, I saw a couple of, a couple of scrunched up eyes. What, are there any questions on what I just did? Yes. So, 
Oh, I messed up. Yeah. I messed up. I messed up. This one should be six, right? Oh, okay. And then if that's able to reduce it. Yeah, and then you can reduce it. Wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So that gives us 10, 12. Is that what you were talking about? Yeah. Okay. And then 10, 12 simplifies to. Did you show the other class that that's how to do it? No. So then this one is five, six, X. There we go. And, and then plus one, two, Y. How do you say this fraction? One half, one half Y, yeah. Okay, <laughs> any questions on that one? Okay. Now, I want you to try example six on your own. Okay, there's, a, there's more variables, so you're going to have three terms instead of two, but I want you to try to combine those like terms. And I'm going to solve these one step at a time. So I want you to go ahead and start it. Okay. Do you guys want me to do this with you? I already finished. Did you finish? Yeah. Yeah, we have an ahead. Okay. Okay. Then I'll do it, and then um, some of you who haven't, you can do it with me. So I'm going to go ahead and circle my like terms. I have 6x negative 5x and negative 2x. One thing you have to remember is when we're doing subtraction, you have to go in order from left to right. You cannot, so you can't combine negative five and negative two and then add in six, you'll get the wrong answer. So I have these, so I have six x minus five x minus two x, okay? So six minus five is one x. Now, I'm going to change this to addition. So I keep this number, change that, and make that its opposite. And I end up with this right here. Okay. Oops, you guys can't. Oh, yeah, you can't see. All right, let me go to our next one. Our next one is 8y, but there's no like term there. So we're just going to have an 8y. Our next one is 4z and positive 7z. So that's just 4z plus 7z, and that equals this. So our final answer Okay, did I do that one right? Yeah. Okay. Now this bottom line can be a little bit tricky, but I want you to try this on your own. Did you guys already finish this one? Yeah. No, okay. I'm gonna give a couple of you a minute to work on this one. For those of you who are done, you can try to do the rest of the notes. Work on something. I don't understand the words. The distributive property? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. I'll go quickly. So we have, x squared, y squared, x squared, y squared. So we have negative three plus four, and you should get one x squared, y squared for that. Our next one is eight a squared, b squared, and negative 12. So eight minus 12 is negative four a squared b squared and then and then uh x y is by itself all right so here we go i'm going to write this in the order i want to so here we go we have negative four a squared b squared as long as your four has a negative in front of it it could be anywhere in there and then plus x squared, y squared, and you could have a one right there if you want, plus x, y. All right. Let's move on to the back, or page two, I mean. 
Okay, on page two, I'm going to do the left side, and then you will do the right side on your own. So I'm just going to do the left side, and you guys can watch, and then do the right side. So for example six, we're just distributing the three to both terms inside of the parentheses. I don't know how many times I see students distributing it to the first term, but not the last term. So they might get 3x plus 2 rather than 3x plus 6. Okay. So in this case, this is 3x because 3 times x is 3x and 3 times 2 is 6. All right, let's go to eight. Now with eight, I know that a lot of students will try to distribute the A. Anytime there is an operation, meaning an addition or subtraction sign in between a term and your parentheses, you will never distribute that term, okay? You only distribute the number that is right in front of almost touching the parentheses, okay? That's important. So in this case, I'm going to leave my A alone, and I'm only going to distribute my 3 to the 7x and the 2. So I get A plus 3 times 7x is 21x, and 3 times 2 is 6. Now I have to see if there are any like terms to combine. In this one, there are not. So this is actually my final answer. A plus 21X plus six. All right, let's go to 10. Now we have a variable plus something, but we have the parentheses. Remember, we're not gonna distribute this R. We distribute what is in front of the parentheses. What do we know is in front of the parentheses, but we don't have to write it? One. one. So I'm going to put my one right here, and I'm going to distribute it to both the y and the negative 12. Now, some of you will say, well, we don't really need to distribute it, because when we write it out, we just write it out without the parentheses. So we have r plus 1 times y is 1y, and 1 times negative 12 is negative 12. And that's true if there is a positive number in front of, or a positive one in front of the parentheses. It is not true if there is a negative, like the one that we're gonna do in a minute. So our final answer here is r plus one y minus 12. And again, you don't have to put that one there. You don't want to do that one one. Okay, so then let's do one with a negative. r minus, we're gonna put a one right here. And we're gonna now distribute a negative one to both terms. This is where the signs of your terms inside the parentheses change. They become the opposite. So we bring down our R. Negative one times Y is a negative one Y. Negative one times a negative two gives you a positive two. Okay. So then our answer here is R minus one Y plus two. All right. Any questions? Okay, I want you to do the whole right column on your own. I'm going to pause the video, and then I will just show the answers. So you'll need to pause the video and do your work, and then check your answers after. Okay, we're going to go ahead and check our answers. So uh, any questions on 7 or 9? Can I leave? Okay. And then moving it down to 11 and 13, any questions on those two? <laughs> um, so are you looking at 13? Okay, so I'm distributing a negative. So a negative times a positive gives me a negative. So that would be a negative three. And then a negative times a positive gives you a negative. So if it was a negative times a negative, it would be a positive. Does that help? Okay. Yes. If you switch up the order, that's okay. Yeah. What numbers? 
Well, if you vote, yeah, you have to get three votes. That's part of those are part of the problem. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the back. And all this side is is more of the same, but bigger. Right? It's not new, it's just more numbers, more variables. So I will do some of these with you. Um, and then you're gonna do the rest on your own. So I will be doing number, uh, I'll do number 14 with you. So let's go ahead and do that one. Remember, we wanna leave our 5X alone because it's separated between the seven with that positive. So our 5X stays just 5X. But we are gonna distribute the seven to all three terms, okay? So we bring down our 5X because we're not doing anything with that right now. And positive seven times a positive three gives us a positive 21. Positive seven times a positive two X gives us a positive 14 X. Positive seven times a negative five Y gives us a negative 35 Y, yep. Are we finished? Yes. Oh, I mean, no. Kylie, why are we not finished? Because we haven't, like, we haven't added the 14x plus the 5x. Right, we need to combine our like terms. So 5x and 14x are like terms. So we have to combine those. And then the other two are not like terms, so we leave those alone. So our final answer here would be 19x minus 35y plus 21. And if you have it in a different order, that's okay. But because that 35 is negative, you have to make sure there is a negative sign in front of it. Okay. All right, I'm gonna skip 15 and I'm gonna go to 16. You are going to do 15, yes, but you're going to do that one on your own. Okay, let's look at 16. 16 is the same, but the, the only difference is that we have three times that we have to distribute. So let's go ahead and distribute all of these. We have negative 2 times A and times B. We have a negative 4 times A and times B, and we have a positive 3 times A and times B. So go ahead and distribute all three of those out. And then um, once you're done, I want you to look up here and make sure you did it correctly. But try it on your own first. So when you're done, you can check. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and combine my like terms. So once you check this, I want you to combine your like terms. Try to do it without looking though. Okay, now I ended up with negative 2a, negative 4a, and 3a getting a negative 3a. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Now, why don't I have to do the other three before the, the same side? It's the same number, so I don't really have to do that. Negative 3a and minus. Yeah. Plus negative. Yeah, or just minus 3. Yeah. Either one is the same. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do number 17 and then I'm done doing ones with you and you're gonna do the rest on your own. So let's look at this one. You always have to, to go from the inside out. 
So the first thing that I have to do is I have to distribute this negative right here. One. Negative one to both the A and the B, the negative B. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. But I'm not touching the negative and the bracket. So I'm just gonna bring those down. So I have a negative with my bracket. And then I have a negative one times A, which is negative one A. And then a negative one times a negative B. Plus one B. Yes, so negative times negative is positive. Now, now I'm here. What do you think my next step is? One. One. Uh, that 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 doesn't tell me what I'm supposed to do. What Lily. Uh, Perfect. We're gonna distribute this negative to both terms on the inside because the bracket. It's just another way to write a parenthesis. But when we have a parenthesis within a parenthesis, sometimes we get those confused, so we use those brackets, okay? So then our final answer here, negative one times a negative one A is just a positive one A. Negative one times a positive one is a negative one B. And again, you could write it as just A minus B. You don't need those ones in front of it. Okay. Now, I want you to try these and the rest of them, and then we'll be finished, and you'll have a chance to work on your homework. So I'm going to pause the video, and I want you guys to do these, and then we'll come back to them. Okay, here's number 15, so go ahead and check that one. Any questions on 15? Yeah, that's fine. You could swap them. Okay, I'm going to move it down. Does somebody need me to wait? Anymore? Okay, I'm going to move it down to 18. Here's 18. You might have ones in front of those. That's okay. So are there any questions on 18? All right, let's go ahead and do 19 together because some of you um, tried it and um, maybe made a few mistakes. So remember, we're working from the inside out. So I'm going to put a one here because I have to solve the inside of this parenthesis first. And I have to distribute my negative one to the two positive 2xy and the positive 2x. Whatever I'm not working with, I'm just going to rewrite. So I'm not working with 5xy yet. That's plus, and I start my bracket. I'm not doing anything with the 4x. And then I have to distribute my negative 1. So I get negative 2xy minus 2x. And then I bring down my negative 3a because that is not part of the parenthesis. Can I see that? Yes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine my terms within the bracket before I add my 5xy, okay? So within the bracket, I have 4x and negative 2x, and I don't have anything else to combine. So once I combine those, I can get rid of those brackets. So I'm not doing anything with my 5xy yet. I'm combining 4x and negative 2x, and that's a 2x. Then I just bring down my negative 2xy and my negative 3a. Does that make any sense? Okay. Next, I have to combine any other like terms that I have. Yes. So I'm going to combine those together, and that gives us 3xy. So I'm going to rewrite my answer over here as negative 3a plus 2x 
plus 3xy. You could also have 3xy plus 2x minus 3a. It doesn't matter the order as long as your sign is correct. Okay, and so that concludes our lesson for 1.8, simplifying algebraic expressions.